Jack IUP uh, lost the toss. They will kick off to Lock Haven. Let's go down to the sideline, see if we can get a report from Doug Steve. Okay, down here on the field, Coach Signetti in the pregame talk, he told his players defensively, we have to rush the quarterback. On offense, he just told the offense to execute. Now, it was an unusual pregame because they were everyone was outside. The facilities here at Lock Haven, which you're going to redo after this year, they all had to stay outside, and the, both Lock Haven and IUP were right next to each other. So Coach Signetti didn't really say this much this week. He told the team, just let's get to the sideline, let's get warmed up and ready to go. Back upstairs. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> uh, just a little sideline for our listeners back uh, home, uh, Jack. Of course, we are a good, I would say, 100 yards away from Doug as we're talking, because around the uh, field is a track, and then the stands, and we're in the press box. Good view of the field, but we're quite a ways from the field uh, laterally, and then IEP's uh, bench is across the way. So Doug, I'm guessing, is a good 100 yards away from us, so we have to use hand signals, being we're out of the range of 1160, barely out here in Lock Haven, and we're actually using a flashlight, I guess, that Bill Otto <laughs> came up with last night in yeah. your game with uh, Indiana High and North Hills. So we kind of hold the hand up, and Doug signals us when he's ready and then I flash the light at him he's able to pick that up through the through the glass he here of the press box he got you, you but it to, works you have to be able to audibleize in his business right and it does it does work in uh, some very interesting comments and uh, Doug does a great job and we're so pleased to bring this new sideline feature to you because uh, he'll be on the spot down there and signaling us when he has some important information that'll keep you updated on this contest. IUP 4-0 against Lock Haven, 1-3. First conference game for IUP under Coach Frank Signetti in his eighth year. Dennis Thorell in his fourth year at Lock Haven. Mike Gary, who's been outstanding, kicking off. will boot it off. Larry Kupek is the referee. The umpire is Harry Muckle. Dave Bergstead is the headlinesman. Darrell Lockinger, the line judge. Gary Anderson, the field judge. John Ruggieri, the back judge. Don Kovac, the clock operator for first quarter action. Here's Jack Benedict. Okay, Ray, thank you. And here we go with Michael Geary kicking to Tony Harrison and Keith McLaughlin. High end over end. It's going to be Harrison at the 12. Comes up to the 15, near side to 25. Finds a hole to 30. And he is running out of bounds at the 37-yard line of Lockheed right in front of their bench. Zach Gibson kind of just hit him on the ankles, but a great run back from the 13 onto the 37. So Lock Haven starts with excellent field position. Bob McLaughlin, you've heard so much about him. As we told you, he runs this run and shoot. He's the total offensive leader in the PSAC at 307 yards a game, and he wastes no time, no huddle. They line up, two receivers left, two right. You'll hear that all day. A super back or a lone setback is a FIBA fair nod. McLaughlin from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, sophomore, with four down linemen for IUP, and he gives two a fair nod, and he gets about two yards on the play to the 39. IUP's defense number one in the PSAC, and uh, on the tackle was Ike Fields. Jeff Turnage also helping out as they went with their lone setback. They run the no huddle, run and shoot offense. Challenge for IUP, obviously. Again, receivers. We're going to go with trips to the left side and a flanker to the right side with a lone setback. Second down and eight to go at the 39-yard line of Lockhaven. We're just underway. Short drop. McLaughlin back. Throws the pass, and it's knocked down and almost intercepted by Andre Hilliard. And that pass was overthrown, intended it for the fullback. Fairnot not even close to him. Absolutely. And uh, Hilliard got his left hand on the ball, couldn't get both hands up there to make the interception. He obviously was the closest one to him, but McLaughlin simply off the mark there, third and eight. McLaughlin with uh, 101 for 175, 1,223 yards, 59% completion percentage. He has thrown seven touchdowns. He has thrown six interceptions. We've got receivers two left, two right, lone setback. IEP jumps back, almost offside, back to pass, setting up, looking, pumping, throwing over the middle, incomplete. Spinoza, the intended receiver, in a crowd down there. An incomplete pass and not a good series for Lockhaven. And they go three up and three down, and it's fourth down. Yeah, McLaughlin off the target again. Spinoza was able to get his left hand and deflected it. There were all IUP white shirts around him. They'll punt. Charles Tabor, Traber, that is, is in. He's a freshman, 220-pounder from Council Rock High School, averaging 32 yards a kick. 51 is his longest. Mike Woods and Mario Hardison are back to receive for IUP between their 20 and 25. The snap is a good one, and he has his time, and Traber gets it away. Not a good kick coming up, making the fair catch at the 31-yard line of IUP is Mario Hardison, and IUP will have its first set of downs here at the 14.07 mark, and no score between IUP and Lockhaven. IUP football sponsors include Luther Ford Sales. Go with the winner. Go with Luther Ford in Homer City. The Co-op Store, a plus for the student and a plus for you. And Coca-Cola, always Coke. 
So just outside the 30-yard line for IUP, it's first and 10. The uh, center for IUP, as we didn't give you the offensive line, at the hammer, Chris Sledge comes out there. John Zavatsky and Matt Delverney, the guards. The tackles are Valario and Iacomelli. Out of the eye, it goes to Michael Mann. He bounces outside at the 35. He's got the 40-yard line, and he has run out of bounds near the 43-yard line. Michael Mann picks up a first down. His uh, statistics, staggering, 3,370. He needs uh, 30 yards today to become the all-time Western Division rusher in uh, the conference. In his first four games this year, he's averaging 148 yards a game. He has uh, been over 100 yards in each game. Uh, He's just been fantastic. I guess the only place he's down a little, he's only scored three touchdowns because they've been giving the ball to Campolo to get the short yardage TDs. Right, Campy leads the team with five touchdowns. Jamone Smith to the left, out of the eye, goes to Michael again. Michael's at the 45 and gets to the 46-yard line where he's met by Terry Fisher, the junior cornerback from Coriopolis, comes over to make the stop. And coming up uh, for IUP, uh, let me give you their wide outs along with Jamone Smith, who leads the team in receptions. Derek Smith, tight end Theo Turner now replaces Scott McClellan. The fullback is Dan Glass, and the tailback Michael Mann. And Scott Woods runs the attack for IUP, the quarterback senior from Bel Air, Ohio. Jamone comes to the left. Derek Smith goes to the right. 43 defense by Lockhaven. We'll give you their defense in a minute. It goes to Mann for a third time. Can't go inside. He slides to the 50-yard line, just barely got to the 50. Spinning him around was Willie Wimbush, the linebacker, brought him down. Be a third and two and a half as Mann has carried the ball exclusively on this uh, opening possession by IUP as Scott McClellan comes in and tight end with a play from the bench and Theo Turner is out. What do you do on third and two and a half? Give it to Mann again? Give it to Glass? Or does Scott Wood throw his first pass of the afternoon? We'll find out. All right, let's watch him go with uh, Jamone split to the left side and Derek is flanked to the right from the eye. Need about two and a half yards, as we mentioned, for the first down right at midfield. Woods pitches to Michael, sweeping right, and he's got to get a first down to the secondary, the 45, the 40, the 35, up the middle at the 30, to the 25, cuts outside at the 20, 15, 10, and he won't get a touchdown, but he gets to the five-yard line. Michael Mann with another tremendous run, and that's a 45-yard scamper for Michael Mann, and he's down, he's shaken up. Now they, he's sitting down now. Jamone checks on him, and Scott Woods wants to come over and check on him. It's on our side of the field. Oh, my. And he is hurting. So we're going to have a break in the action as the IUP trainers, Ron Trini and company, check out Michael Mann after a tremendous run. There is no score. 12.32 to go. We'll be back after this. There are hundreds of ways to say IUP proud, and the co-op store has them all. Located in the Student Union, the co-op has been serving the IUP community for over 50 years with the world's largest selection of IUP memorabilia, as well as a complete supply of gift items, textbooks, and classroom supplies. Equally important, all profits are returned to IUP student activities. The IUP Co-op Store, where your dollars work for you. I'm a recent graduate from IUP, and you know what? It was such a great experience. I'm going off for my master's degree. If you're in high school looking for a university that will give you great options, in a community college looking to transfer to a university where there's a great faculty that will take a real interest in you, or if you're thinking about getting your master's or doctorate. Take it from me. You'll like IUP. Michael Mann heads to the sideline. Doug Steve is going to be down there, and we'll have a report shortly, I'm sure. He may have just fallen on the ball. He appears to be okay as he heads to the far sideline. The first fear is maybe he got his leg caught under him or something. But Ron Trenny, the trainer, now, and uh, they're checking with him on the sideline. And Doug was heading over that side of the field. Now he has to encircle the field. He can't run across it, so Willie Dotson is in at tailback. First and goal at the five for IUP, Jack. And he takes the pitch. He tries to sweep outside, but they hit him right around the five-yard line. He got nowhere. Tony Harrison, free safety junior, good defensive back, came up to make the stop at second and goal. We'll take a look over there, and it appeared that Michael may have just fallen on the ball, and knocked uh, out of wind, uh, out of breath there. It appeared to, at first it might be an ankle or a knee problem, but uh, he ran off under his own power. We'll get to Doug after this uh, play. It's second down and goal at the five yard line. Split backs now with Scott Woods having Derek Smith to the right and Jamone, or to the left and Jamone to the right. Short drop, here's the fade for Jamone over his head incomplete. Let's go to the sideline and Doug Steve. 
Okay, down here, the injury with Michael Mann is he got the wind knocked out of him along the sideline there, plus he got a cut on his left elbow. He's coming back in. They had to get the blood off with the new under new NCAA rules. Back upstairs. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Doug, and uh, the cut on the elbow, and he's back in at tailback, so that's good news for IUP fans. Meanwhile, third down and goal at the five. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Third down and goal to go. Split backs with Mann in there and Campolo, the short yardage man, and almost jumping defensively, Lockhaven. The snap back to pass. Here's the threat. Incomplete, intending it for Jamon Smith, but a good coverage over there, and they didn't loop it. This time it was a fastball. Yeah, the two passes by Woods were off the mark here, just as the passing McLaughlin early on. So Mike Gary will be attempting a field goal for IUP. He is uh, fourth uh, in the nation, Division II, most field goals. Seven of eight attempts, 33 is long. He's 15 for 17 on extra points and he's been a consideration for player of the game offensively oh, a couple of games Jim. absolutely that's right and he's seven for eight 33 is his longest this is 22 yards for Michael Geary the left foot kicker he'll kick out of McGee's pole snapping the ball down and Geary's kick is up there and over end and it's through and so IUP gets on the board first 11 43 in the first quarter it's IUP three lock Haven nothing you're listening to IUP football on 11 60. With early detection and prompt treatment, the cure rate for breast cancer is high. The American Cancer Society recommends that all women from the age of 35 have a baseline mammogram. To meet this vital community need, Lee Hospital offers the Richland Mammography Center at 350 Budfield Street. Mammography services are also offered at the hospital. Take a step that may save your life. Make an appointment through your physician, or for information or help, call 266-4102. With Jack Benedict and our sideline reporter Doug Steve Ragos reporting to you on 1160 WCCS in Homer City as IUP leads 3-0 here on a Mike Gary 22-yard field goal. And Gary will be kicking off uh, with just uh, 3 minutes and 17 seconds gone in the first quarter here at Lock Haven. Beautiful view from the press box here overlooking Hubert Jack Stadium as we look down on the river down below in the valley. It is very overcast. It's been threatening, but it's been holding off on the weather thus far. So, so far, so good. Gary, the left-footed kicker. And we've been on the road so long, we get a chance to see a lot of places, but uh, finally homecoming next week and back to the friendly confines of George P. Miller Stadium. And we'll remind you, it's a 2 o'clock kickoff traditionally on homecoming to give people a chance to view the parade in downtown Indiana and then make their way to Miller Stadium. We'll be on the air with the head coach, Frank Signetti, show at 1.30 next Saturday afternoon. Undefeated Shippensburg, if they remain so, will be the opponent for IUP. Harrison and McLaughlin are back. McLaughlin has one touchdown this year, a 93-yard return. This is high end over end, but it's Harrison who's going to settle under it at the six-yard line. Comes up near side, 10-15, finds a hole to 20-25. Down the sideline, he stepped out of bounds somewhere. Uh, oh, all the way up around midfield. I guess he stayed in bounds. He's close to the 50-yard line, so he took it from the six, a 46-yard return by Tony Harrison. And I don't know if it was Brister had finally got him out of bounds there, but a great return to midfield. So Lock Haven on their special teams returning punts uh, looking good on their first two returns. They trail three to nothing. Bob McLaughlin, their outstanding sophomore quarterback in there ready to run the no huddle run and shoot offense. Two receivers to the right side, Wyland and McGinty. Spinoso to the left and another wide out. Now that's McGinty who goes in motion. One setback, four down line, but IUP. The draw goes to Farinot. He is hit and tracked down hard by Lewis Choice, and it was Andre Hildred who came up to also really put the hit on him. A two-yard pickup, second down and eight. Farinot looked like he was going to get big yardage when uh, Choice landed on his back and pancaked him down for that short two-yard gain. Farinot, the lone setback, 45 carries, 190 seven yards this year 4.4 two receivers left and right each way Bob McLaughlin the sophomore quarterback with a second down and eight at the IEP 49 there he goes with a draw again and Farinog gets one yard and that's it but he had no time as Jeff Turnage the ECAC all-star from last year makes the tackle and again Lockhaven operating with no huddle and third down coming up and uh, going to be at least seven yards to go. Duncan and Spinoza to the right. McGinty 
Out here to the, or to the left, rather, McGinty and Wyland to the right. Third down and seven. Bob McLaughlin in IEP territory. Dropping back to pass. The short drop over the middle. Man is open, and it's caught by McGinty, and he's brought down at the 40, and he's got a first down. It's Omar Stewart who brings him down. But wide open was McGinty over the middle. Yeah, a little delay pattern coming out of there, and he went airborne trying to pick up the sticks, and uh, Stewart stopped him in midair, but he fell forward and got the first down at the IUP 40. First first down of the ball game for the Bald Eagles of Lock Haven. They trail IUP 3-0 first quarter, 10-26 remaining. Obviously, uh, Lock Haven's looked at the film of the no huddle that Westchester ran against IUP. Back to pass on first down, looking sideline, incomplete. Intending it at the 32-yard line, down on his knees and trying to make the catch over there was Wyland. Second and 10 at the 39-yard line of IUP. Three to nothing game. IUP leading it actually to the 40-yard line. It's just a nose inside that 40. And again, looking to the sideline for the offensive, uh, to the offensive coordinator and getting the signal. Twins to the left side, slot right on the right side. And this run and shoot offense. Ike Fields almost offside, gets back. They give it to the lone running back, Fairnot. Fairnot still getting about five yards on the play to the 35 yard line. It'll bring up third down and five. Turnage again helping out on the tackle for IUP. Turnage has been in a lot of stops thus far, Jack. Well, they don't uh, waste any time. They get the signals from the sideline. McLaughlin lines them up. Same formation. Third down and five at the IUP 35. IUP with four down linemen. Here's McLaughlin with the count. Long count this time. Drops back to pass. He sets. He looks. He looks. He throws sideline. Incomplete. And the, in, the intended receiver slipping a bit. No good to Wyland. Let's go down to Doug Steve on the sideline. Okay, down here on the sideline, talking to some of the players about the footing. It is slick down here. During this last uh, series, Matt Delverney is down here getting new cleats on all his shoes, so uh, that gives you some indication of the footing down here today, back upstairs. On all his shoes? Uh, you mean he has more than two? <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's uh, fourth down at the 35 of IUP. Fairnot checks with his quarterback, McLaughlin, trips to the right side, and a wide out to the left. Fourth down and five, big play here. McLaughlin takes the snap and he drops back to pass. A lot of receivers, but he is hit and it's incomplete and the pressure put on by 92, Eric Cook. And Ike Fields was the man, too. They were both there. I don't know who got his arm, but they hit his arm as he was throwing it and the ball fell harmlessly to the ground, closer to an IUP player. And IUP holds and they'll take over in good field position at their own 35-yard line. First and 10 to go, leading 3 to nothing with 9.34 to go in the first quarter. IUP defense is uh, number one in the conference and they just are uh, tremendous giving up 279 a game and the rushing defense giving up only 84 yards a game now the offense goes to work and let's see if Michael Mann is in there and he is and he gets the ball and he gets about two maybe three yards as it is to the 38 yard line right up the middle down on the bottom, Rick Basile was in there to make the stop for the Lock Haven Bald Eagles. They are last in defense in the conference. Theo Turner in, Scott McClellan out at the tight end spot for IUP. Second and eight at the 37 for the Indians of head coach Frank Signetti. Mario Hardison is in as a wideout to the far side of the field and Chuck Wyatt to the right. Dan Glass is the fullback. Second down play at the IUP 33. The pitch comes to the side, the near side. It is Mann. Mann gets a, across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Dalverney was coming outside the block. Mann cut it up. And over among others to make the stop was Andre Brown. And Willie Winbush also cutting through there to make a good uh, assist on that tackle at the 42. So IUP trying to establish that ground game, Jack. They have third and a long three, and here come the Smiths. Jamone and Derrick in as Hardison is out of there in glass. They'll go with the three wideouts. Interesting note on Jamone Smith this week. They're talking about him being a grad student looking to law school. Jamone has a brother. His name is Derek, but no relation with these two guys. Back to pass is Woods. He throws, and it's caught by Jamone. Jamone in the clear at the 45, the 40-yard line, hit from behind, and he goes down at the 36-yard line and brought down on the play by Willie Wimbush. Pretty good gain on third down and three from the IUP 42 to the 36 they're going to mark it. It's about uh, 22 yards. Jamone Smith coming into this game as IUP's leading receiver with 14 receptions, three touchdowns, and about 17 yards a catch, and he got more than that on that one. And it is Mario Harrison out of Johnstown to the right and Chuck Y from Johnstown to the left, but it's Michael Mann from Miami, Florida. Up the middle, tripped up, and they'll mark it around the 31. 
a gain of six yards in the play. By the way, uh, lost in this, Michael has uh, set the record all-time Western Division. He passed Al Raines and Joe Spies, who played here at Lockhaven. And he is still, Michael, that is, climbing on that all-time list. Only two players have ever had 4,000 or more. Well, it's at the 31-yard line. Second down and four to go with Wyatt to the left and Hardison to the right. Out of the eye with Scott Woods taking the snap. And he fakes to Michael over the middle field. Turner wide open, has it inside the 10, down to the six. And it's going to be first down and goal to go for IUP. Well, Theo made a great grab over the middle and took it for 21 yards from the 27 to the six-yard line. Well, Scott Woods is play faking beautifully out there. And they want the tight ends to catch the football more and to hang on it more. And Theo moved it to the six-yard line where it's goal to go. Mario Hardison goes to the right. Theo Turner is on the left side, double tights, and Scott McClellan's on the right. It's glass and man. Man has the ball, can't go outside. Up the middle, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. I don't know if anybody touched him. Great acceleration. Michael Mann scores, and IUP makes it a 9-0 lead over Lockhaven. 7-0-7 remaining first quarter. Oh, he got great blocking on the right side of the line. Michael, we always say he never runs in a straight line. That time he did. He saw the goal line. It was a whole bang. A crooked straight, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. But you're right. And uh, Michael establishing himself on the ground in the two excellent pass plays to Jamon and to Theo Turner. And it is Geary in to attempt the extra point now for IUP. Geary is into it and he kicks it up there and the kick is up and it is good timeout Huber Jack Stadium Lockhaven IUP 10 Lockhaven nothing we'll be back with IUP football after this That was a 65-yard drive for IUP as they now lead it 10 to nothing with 7.07 to go in the first quarter. Biggest plays in the drive, third and three at the 42, a 22-yard pass from Scott Woods to Jamone Smith taking it to the Bald Eagle 36. And then it was Scott Woods from the 27 to the six-yard line to Theo Turner. And then Michael Mann, six yards out, bolts in for his fourth touchdown of the season, capping the drive, and Gary's point after makes a 10-zip IUP and uh, doing about what they expected thus far against Lockhaven here on the road. That's right, Ray, and that touchdown by Michael Mann, I'm going to check my list here, that ties Steve Gerting's record for rushing touchdowns. And I uh, got it from memory here, but we've got it on the list. That's uh, 33, isn't it? That's right. He needed one. He had 32. He's got 33. The all-time record at IUP is held by Jai Hill at 41. Here's the kick, high end over end. Harrison, 10-yard line, near side. He where he's had success. Now he cuts across the field at the 20. 25-30, nice return to the 31, and Jack Creech brought him down. He's made some nice returns. He's had his third opportunity as Tony Harrison. He's exciting, and that was the least of his three runbacks, and it was still 21 yards to the 31. Well, the offense here has not been able to generate anything. Kevin Brown, I see, is going to be in there at the super back, they call it, spot. He's in there for a FIBA fair not. Bob McLaughlin with a know-how to offense has Spinoza as the uh, slot man to the left. Wyland, the far man to the left. Two receivers to the right. McLaughlin going to pass again. Screen set up, and it's over the head of the intended receiver. Brown and a flag, and I think we're going to have, look at the down lineman. Was that a problem? Oh, I think it uh -oh. is a problem when you have 70s and 60s down around the 40-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> they obviously didn't get the call. I get, I know a couple receiver. of them. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see what IUP decides here, if they're going to take accept this walk-off or not. We'll remind you that sponsors of IUP football include Tito Beverages, Indiana County's master distributor for Bud, Bud Light, Bush, and Michelob products. Cellular One, clear across Pennsylvania and clear across America. And Sheets, where you can get it for $3.99 a case every day. There's the walk-off in eligible downfield back to the 26. Surprising IUP took it. And Just it brings up first, right, right, first and 15. 
Well, here we go with McLaughlin operating with the lone setback. Now, man in motion, far side of the field. Play faking, rolling to the left side. McLaughlin sets up, throws the pass, incomplete, over intended for Spinoza, but he was covered well. And the pass was way overthrown. McLaughlin's been off the mark. He's only had one completion on the money uh, thus far in the first quarter. Clock stop with 6.44 remaining, and IUP leading 10 to nothing over Lock Haven. Well, he had that super week last week, 430 yards. And uh, when you make the uh, Don Hansen Offensive Player of the Week in the country, you've had some kind of week, but he's having a bad day today, and of course the IEP defense has a lot to do with it. Here we go with trips to the left side, and on the draw, Brown stop. Now he breaks out, 30, gets to the 31. Andre Hildyard brings him down around the original line of scrimmage, and Andre Hildyard making the stop for IUP. He came into the game with 17 tackles. It'll bring up third down and 10, just beyond the 31-yard line. You know, the no huddle offense is deceptive in a way, Jack, because uh, the quarterback, McLaughlin, goes so far back, by the time he gets a signal, comes up under center, IUP is able to make defensive adjustments and put players in there. He's not up under center real quickly. Trips again to the left side. Man in motion coming to our side of the field. That's McGinty now reverse motion. McLaughlin takes the snap, and he gives it to Brown. Brown, 35-yard line, down, goes at the 37, and far, far short of a first down, and they'll have to punt it away again. Jack Creech on top. Good stop by Creech there because he did have a hole. It's fourth and about four, but punt formation, and Charles Traber will come in to punt for Lockhaven. 10-0, IUP leading, 5-44 and ticking, first quarter. More football coming up today in its entirety. Homer Center and Laurel Valley, two undefeated teams. So stay with us here at 1160 WCCS. Mark Burdick will have the cover. Reach. It's uh, Mike Woods and Mario Hardison back to receive. Traber takes the snap and he gets it up there. Booming kick. Nice kick. Fair catch. Hardison hauls it in. 24-yard line of IUP with a lead here of 10 to nothing for IUP. 5.22 to go in this the first quarter. And a flag. Back up at the line of scrimmage. If it's against IUP for being perhaps offside, it could be a first down for Lockhaven, or let's check the referee, illegal procedure against the Bald Eagles. IUP may force them to punt again because uh, pretty good punt, no return, and Hardison has the ability to really bring that ball back as does Scott, or Mike Woods, twin receivers back there, so they're going to force them to kick off. That's exactly right. Uh, Hardison averaging 15 yards a return. And Traber is going to be backed up this time, standing at his 14. You have a score, Ray? 7-0 Edinburgh over Claren in the first quarter in that big ball game. And Slippery Rock Shippensburger playing today, too, as conference play gets underway. Traber will stand right now at his 17-yard line, and Woods and Hardison back there. Gets the snap, gets it up there, not nearly as good. And it is going to bounce around midfield, 40-yard line. IUP is going to get uh, better of this, and they'll have it. At the 39-yard line, 5-10 to go. So Picked up about 15 yards that on helped. that, Jack. Yep, that helped a lot. And the IEP offense will go to work. They've had a field goal out of Geary, a touchdown out of Michael Mann. Scott Woods running the attack. They've had uh, a lot of injuries here for Lockhaven. And a couple of their uh, key people out, just shy of the 39-yard line. Mike Campolo in at fullback. Scott Woods has them receivers left and right from the eye. He'll fake to the tailback. Looks, goes long, downfield. Diving catch, super catch. Did he, he's got it at the 20-yard line. Yeah, okay. Great catch. Nope, didn't hold on to it. No, well, he, one uh, official looked like he was going to call it good. He I lost he it would. as he hit the ground, Jamone Smith. And Jamone looking back as he comes up the field. Boy, well, he stretched out 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six frame. And I guess the contact with the ground, and that's why they called it no good. <laughs> what? Oh, man, I tell you, that was a fantastic uh, athletic move by Jamone Smith. He just let him go one-on-one, -on -one and they figure they don't, they don't have a whole lot of size in the secondary, and you've got a receiver as big as Jamone, you better go to him. Well, he had it as he was in the air, and he had it as he initially hit the ground, but then he rolled over and he didn't have it. Tight end is Scott McClellan on the left side, Jamone on the same side. 
Short drop, little flare pass out in the flat. It goes to Michael to 45, the 50, and he's only open at the 40-yard line. He darts a man at the 30. He's at the 25. He's at the 20. Can he go all the way? He needs to beat a man, and he's tripped up at the 10-yard line. Finally getting him was Terry Fisher, but Michael Mann making the cast on a little swing pass, and he goes all the way to the 10-yard of Lockhaven. 51 yards, Jack. He made 19 moves as he went through that secondary, but he couldn't get away from the last man from pay dirt, Brian Cole, who had the angle on him and knocked him down at the 10. It went from the IEP 39 to the Lockhaven 10 on a little flat pass from Scott Woods to Michael Mann. I tell you, Michael Mann has had a super year, and we're only at the fifth game of the season. He's got to get out of there and get a breather, I think. No, he doesn't. He carries the ball, and he rolls right. He goes right and picks up a yard to the nine-yard line, following his blocking in there. Not much room. John Zavatsky giving him some blocking. It'll be second down, coming up at the nine and goal. Well, Michael's in great shape, but he just went 51 yards and made all kind of moves, and they hand him the ball in the next play. <laughs> I'm very, very surprised. I thought Willie Dotson might be in at least for one play. McLaughlin brings in the play. The offensive line for IUP has just been tremendous. They've allowed only one sack this year, and their, their blocking has just been fabulous. They operate out of the I formation, double tight. Derek Smith to the left, quick pitch, goes far side of the field. It's man at the five, and he gets to the four. And hanging on for dear life to bring down Michael Mann, and that's no easy task, uh, is Willie Wimbush. And it'll be third and goal to four. 10-0 IUP leading it, 3.35 to go in the first quarter. They won last year 44 to nothing. IUP has won the last 11 meetings between these two teams. 81 the last time the Lock Haven won. That was down here, and they uh, really took IUP into camp that year. What was it, 41 to 14? Yeah, think. and I'll tell you, Ray, I always remember the mm. guy Mike Kresovich had mm. 329 yards on that day. Here we go out of the I formation, double tights. Michael Mann can't go inside, bounces outside, and he leaps into the end zone for the touchdown. And another one for IUP at the 3.08 mark. We've got a 16 to nothing score here for IUP, and they're rolling in the first quarter. Man smelled that goal line. He just went airborne to get that last yard or so and landed in the end zone on a slant to the left. And, of course, the big 51-yard play and that little swing pass to Michael from Scott Woods that covered uh, to the 10-yard line, and Michael Geary now comes in to attempt the extra point. 3.08 remaining in the first quarter. John McGee holds. Snap on the ball down. The left foot kick is up there. And Geary's kick is good. Timeout on the field. 17-0 IEP leading Lockhaven. We'll be back with IEP football at 1160 after this. Here's one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is. the other life's too short stop the hate IUP now leads at 17 to nothing over Lockhaven first quarter with 308 remaining that was a 61 yard drive 51 of them coming in one play on a flat pass from Scott Woods to Michael Mann and then Mann taking in for his second touchdown four yards out and it's now 17 to nothing Let's go to Doug Steve. Down here on the field, IEP's offensive line is just manhandling the defensive line from Lock Haven, really opening up big holes for Michael Mann. Back upstairs. Well, we surmised that from up here, and uh, Doug tells us down along the sideline that is fact that the offensive line doing a terrific job. Well, Michael Geary is getting a real workout here in the first quarter, isn't he? What well, is this? His fourth kickoff because Lockhaven received a start the football game, a field goal. That's right. And two touchdowns as Gary is adding to his point total. It's very dark here at Lockhaven, but the weather's been holding off the flag dead still down in the corner of the end zone, so thus far no rain. Tony Harrison and Keith McLaughlin, this is a bad kick. It's going to be a squibber. It's going to bounce and bounce. Oh, but it turns into a good kick. Back at the five, it's McLaughlin. And McLaughlin is uh, undercut, and he goes down around the six-yard line. I think it was Jack Creech, wasn't it? No, Travis Matz was the first one down there, Jack, and then Jack Creech. I think both were there, though. All right, Travis Matz, who's a backup strong safety, one of those uh, special, special team players, a sophomore from Allison, Pennsylvania, and it's at the six for Lockhaven. Just what they did need, horrible field position. Well, IEP just has to be careful. They don't relax too soon in this one. 
remember what happened at Westchester, but I don't think I, uh, Lockhaven has the kind of weapons that the Westchester Golden Rams have. Now, when you want to run a run and shoot and two of your, your top two receivers are out of there, that really hurts too. Lone setback in Brown, Manny in motion, McLaughlin at the six yard line takes the snap and drops back to pass, and he throws a completed pass around the nine, and the ball is fumbled. It's picked up, Zach down. Gibson. They're going to call him down? Yes. No touchdown. Zach picked it up. He, the completed pass was to the nine by McGinney. McGinney was being run backwards to the five, so they gave him forward progress, and at the five, he lost the ball, and IUP picked it up, but he was stopped at the around eight or nine yard line, eight and a half, we'll call it. It's a gain of only a couple, second down and eight. Second and eight to go. IUP with turnage, and I see Troy Wilson, Mike Callahan, and Ike Fields up there along the defensive front. McLaughlin lines him up, two receivers left and right from his own eight in deep uh, trouble here, down 17-0 and deep in his own territory. Gives it to Brown off the left side who gets to the 10, dances his way to about the 13, somewhere in that vicinity is where they'll spot him. Stewart was uh, in and around the tackle, and he leads the team. Omar Stewart does in tackles. Zach Gibson also helping out. Quickly they go to the line of scrimmage, third and two now. Ball at the 14-yard line of Lock Haven. Spinoza, one of the uh, players who is a slot to the right, one of their top receivers. Two left and two right. IUP almost jumped offside. Now they get back. Ike Fields wants the charge on this side. Here's McLaughlin back to pass. Over the middle, it's battled away, and it was Jeff Turnage, I think, who got it. It was. Jeff Turnage got a hand on that one. They were just looking for a little release pass over the middle to the uh, back coming out of the backfield from the running back spot, Kevin Brown, but they'll be forced to punt from around the end zone as IUP holds again, leads 17 to nothing, 152 to go in the first quarter here at Lock Haven. All of the action on 1160 WCCS in Homer City with Jack Benedict and our sideline reporter, Doug Steve, Ray Goss reporting to you. Right on his uh, goal line. Traber takes the snap and he gets it out of there. This kick, uh, not too good. Coming up, Woods makes the fair catch, 42 yard line of Lock Haven. 1.43 to go in the quarter. We'll hold it right here. And IUP leading at 17 to nothing. And they have a, a great shot at putting more on the board. Remember coming up, the Homer Center Wildcats, Laurel Valley Rams, in a big matchup to game in its entirety following the IUP football. Well, I think, Jack, IUP would love to get, uh, obviously, a good lead going into halftime and then uh, get Steve Russell some action. He should be back from that rib injury and get a lot of players to see action in the second half. Thus far, the game plan working. The wideouts now, Hardison to the left, and Derek Smith goes to the right. From the I-4 formation, the ball is fake to man. Back to pass, going over the middle. It's Chuck Wyatt, and he's got it at the 22-yard line, and that's where he goes down. Chuck Wyatt was in there, wide open for the catch. And, of course, IUP with some uh, great talent, and the tackle was made by Mark Harrington. First down from the 42 to the 22, 20-yard pickup. Scott Woods like to get his completion percentage up there. It's not at 50%, it's at 49. He's thrown for 719 yards, six TDs, and two interceptions coming into this game, 43 for 92. We've got the offset backfield in there for IUP. Cam Polo, the fullback, faking. Here's Wyatt, wide open, but the short man, Theo Turner, gets it, and then it's incomplete. He was really hit. And Chuck Wyatt's in the end zone, Ray, all by himself, saying, oh, man, oh, I would have had a touchdown. He, was, he went down the sideline, but Woods was looking for a little crossing pattern for Turner. Turner was uh, open also, but Wyatt was wide open. They, no one picked him up. They just did a little high five there, and in response to one another, Woods and Wyatt. So look for him somewhere else here on this afternoon. Turn around and McClellan in. 22-yard line of Lockhaven, second and 10. 109 to go in the first quarter. IUP 17, Lockhaven nothing. Mario Hardison to the right and Chuck Wyatt to the left. The two Johnstown connection there. Over to uh, handoff, it goes to man. 20, 15, 14-yard line. On top to make the tackle, Kyle Waite, a freshman 230-pound linebacker. Got about eight. Third down and two for IUP. Final minute of the first quarter with IUP leading 17 to nothing and looking for more. I mentioned about the two uh, Johnstown representatives on this team, and I just read a story here the other day about Dave Seidel, the former running back for IUP, and he's coaching in a parochial uh, school league uh, over there, and he's undefeated, and he says he really loves it. Campolo's in at fullback. Will they give it to him on third and short? 
All right, let's take a look. Nope, they give it to the tailback, and Mann's got it. He just accelerates inside the 10 to the 8-yard line, and the front line of IUP is just making gaping holes in there in that defensive line. And in on the stop, along with others, is Andre Brown. Goal to go. Clock shows 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Now uh, it starts moving, and it and the play clock are about equal. If IEP runs it, this could be the last play of the quarter. Hardison to the right, out of the eye formation, double tights at the nine. Woods gives to man, goes right, goes left, five, and he gets down to about the three, maybe the two. But he did all that zigging and zagging and sidestepping. His time's going to run out, and that's the end of the first quarter. And IEP threatening for another touchdown, leading at 17-0 over Lock Haven. And we'll be back with IEP football after this. Second quarter about to begin. Michael Mann, what a quarter. 14 carries, 112 yards already. Plus, uh, remember what he did with a little flat pass, and it's 17-0 here, IUP, as they get ready. And they have the ball in uh, <laughs> great shape again. Four-yard line of Lockhaven. But uh, remember, Ray, the key word coming into this game was letdown. No letdown. IUP knows what they have to do. We're going to give it to you for the second quarter. Okay. He had a couple of passes. Remember that 45-yarder, too, isn't it? Offset eye, can't yeah. pull the right man to the left. Hand off is to Michael Mann. Cuts at the five, puts his head down, down to the one and a half, two yard line. Good defensive stop, preventing him from going in the end zone by Kyle Waite, a linebacker. Gain is to the two, second down and goal at the two. It's probably about Campolo time, I would think, Jack. They usually uh, give him the ball in a short yard situation, yep. and indeed Michael Mann heads to the sideline. Hardison is in. Glass is back in there. Campolo is there. Campolo with five touchdowns. Uh, of course, Mann already has two, so he has five on the air. Campolo left, glass right. Second and goal. It is glass to the left side, fighting his way forward, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. And with 14-20 to go in the second quarter, IUP now leads it 23 to nothing over Lock Haven. Well, I was glad to see that Dan Glass got himself a touchdown, a short yardage situation. He's the converted uh, defensive player, and they had both Campolo and Glass in there, as you called it, and it is Glass who powers it in. So here comes Michael Geary to add another point if he can, and it's 23 to nothing. And that was a 42-yard drive on the short punt. Right. As Geary will attempt uh, the point from placement. McGee, the holder, Ling, the snapper. The ball's down there. The left foot kick is on its way, and the kick is perfect. It is IUP 24 to nothing over Lock Haven. 14 to 20 to go in the second quarter. We'll have the Indian kickoff right after this. With early detection and prompt treatment, the cure rate for breast cancer is high. The American Cancer Society recommends that all women from the age of 35 have a baseline mammogram. To meet this vital community need, Lee Hospital offers the Richland Mammography Center at 350 Budfield Street. Mammography services are also offered at the hospital. Take a step that may save your life. Make an appointment through your physician, or for information or help, call 266-4102. And 60 WCCS Homer City, Jack Benedict, Ray Goss, Doug Steve, 1420 to go in an overcast day here uh, at uh, Lock Haven University, Hubert Jack Stadium. But very sunny so far for IUP. They have just been impeccable. 24 to nothing. Offensive line super. Offense has just been terrific. The defense, they've really thwarted Bob McLaughlin. He hasn't been able to do anything. And it's been all one sided uh, so far here. And we haven't played, well, we've only played a little wee bit more than the first quarter. So, uh, about the only thing Lockhaven's done well is run back, return the kicks. And they've had a lot of practice of doing that. Ray, we'll turn it over to you as Geary gets ready to kick off again. If you're thinking back, IUP uh, beat Northwood 75 to 13 in 1968. Probably the biggest win ever. Most points scored, biggest margin of victory. It is here 24 to nothing. IUP 14 20 to go in the second quarter. And back to receive with uh, Tony Harrison is um, Keith McLaughlin. And Gary will kick it off left-footed. There's the kick on its way. And it's a good one. McLaughlin looking for it. Takes it at the 7. Left sideline return at the 10. 15. And knocked down on a good hit by Travis Matz, who got down there quickly. He's usually the suicide guy, the first one down the field. And he made the stop this time. 
Another hard hitter, Travis Matz, another great play by the special teams. He's the backup strong safety to Zach Gibson. He didn't play last year, was with IUP two years ago, and IUP's really glad to have him back. At the 17, Lock Haywood will put it in play. They go with that no huddle offense. Bob McLaughlin is the quarterback. The lone setback is Afiba Fairnot. They have twins both ways. Lyman in the up position, blocking position. IUP with four down Lyman. And back four steps. The quick out to the left sideline at the 15 complete across the 20 to about the 22 yard line. Making the reception was Dave Weiland. The slot back. Lewis Choice and company over to make the stop. Lewis Choice, the veteran linebacker for IUP. We told you how good this defense is. Lewis with a, uh, an interception and a quite a run back last week on that interception. Good gain on the play out to the 23-yard line from the 17, second down and four. Fair not the only setback. McLaughlin with the IUP linebackers back off about four yards from line scrimmage and back to throw again. McLaughlin gets good protection, fires man there, incomplete at the 38-yard line. Diving, can't make the reception. It is uh, John Spinoza, the wide receiver on the right side. And again, McLaughlin off the mark. And uh, that time he had pretty good protection. He's been chased a lot of times uh, today by that defensive line of IUP. That time he had good protection, but he couldn't hook up. And now uh, he's got to really be frustrated. Third down play. Nose guard is Cook as uh, Turnage getting a breather. On the right side, Mike Callahan is in there. On the left, it is uh, Troy Wilson. And Isaac Fields on the outside for the rush. Here they come. The pass to the right, complete out of the backfield. Spun around, and Jack Creech makes the stop. It looks like he's short of a first down. As making the reception was Brian McGinty, and Creech grabbed him around the shoulders and spun him down at the 26-yard line in that vicinity. Let's see where they're going to if they're going to give him progress or not. Jack's checking through the field, but yeah, they give him a good spot. Jack. Pretty, pretty good spot, yeah. And the first down at the 28-yard line. 13 minutes to go till halftime. 24 to nothing. IUP leads it over Lockhaven. The Bald Eagles come in one and three following their exciting 35-33 win last week over uh, Mansfield. IUP is 4-0, ranked seventh in the nation. Trips to the left. One setback, fair not, as McLaughlin under center. Steps back about five steps. Gets good protection. Throws! And it is a caught it is at the 44-yard line. It went through two IUP players and an excellent reception out there by Otis Duncan, the sophomore wideout. Uh, how in the world did he ever...